Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to this week's Rocky Brand live stream. I hope you have all had a good week. Um, <clears throat> it's been a little while since we spoke, and uh, looking forward to the stream again this evening. Uh, as you can see, um, uh, hello, people. Um, got some new faces on the stream by the looks of things. Hi, Beardy. Hi Helen, thanks for coming on. Um, been a bit of interest in the, the stream topic this week, which is good. Um, looking forward to this. Hey Mohammed, thanks for joining. Uh, so we're going to be talking about descriptive logos versus non-descriptive logos. It's a bit of a mouthful. It's a bit, a bit difficult when you're doing YouTube thumbnails and you're trying to keep everything quite short. Uh, a lot of words to pack in there, but you know, we'll get there. Um, the basically we're going to look through a, a study today and that sounds a bit boring but honestly it's it's not boring it's really interesting um and it really affects everyone it affects anyone who has a well when i say everyone it affects everyone who has a business or an organization anyone who has a brand that they're trying to to develop and push forward the results of this study um, with regards to descriptive and non-descriptive logos raised some some good points um, and I thought it'd be quite good to just have a chat uh, and go through those and also for you guys to join in, of course, um, and let me know what your thoughts are on, on this as we go through it. Um, also later, um, I finally got my finger out and uh, sorted out um, a web page where people can submit their logo designs to me for critique on the channel. Yes, I know I've been talking about it for months and months and months and I finally finally got it done. So the page is up and running and I will reveal that later. Um, don't expect anything amazing looking, but it works. Uh, and we will also talk about, where's my, uh, what else we're going to talk about? Yeah, uh, and then we're also going to just to quickly touch on the mentorship that um, that I talked about. Hey Sabrina, thanks for joining. Uh, Beardy's asking about any troll submissions. Uh, I fully expect, fully expect that to happen. I have no idea how to go around stopping that happening, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens <laughs> with that. Um, you never know. Maybe some of them will make it onto the channel. Um, uh, some some might slip past me. I might completely think that they are genuine logos and I'll end up giving them critique. But you know what? So what? It'll be fun to do it. Uh, yeah, so um, let's, uh, let's, let's crack on, shall we? Let's not hold off any longer and let's have a look at this, this study and let's, let's go through it. It's not long. Um, we'll kind of just look at it in chunks. Um, it really isn't long. It shouldn't take us any more than sort of 10, 15 minutes to go through. And then, and I'll give my thoughts as we're going through. And I'd also like to hear what your thoughts are as well. So let's jump over onto the uh, web. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a study that was done by Harvard Business School for Harvard Business Review by the looks of it. It's a couple of years old now. Um, I'm pretty sure I actually remember hearing about this when they did it, but it popped up on my newsfeed a couple of days ago and I thought you know what I never actually did anything with that I didn't really you know use it uh, for for my own um, content or anything so I thought let's let's do that this week it'll make a great thing for the for the live stream um, so it's a study of 597 logos shows which kind is the most effective 597 it's a bit of a weird number I don't know why they didn't do 600 um, maybe maybe studies sound better when it's a random number you know it's an odd number not an even number maybe it sounds more impressive uh, if, when you're doing that for studies so I'd just like to thank uh, Jonathan Lufarelli, Mudra Mukesh and Amara Mahmood for putting this together and for us to be able to use this today on the stream okay so let's um, let's uh, skip the summary Okay, and let's just go into the into the actual um, article. So imagine you're a marketing manager about to launch a brand called Noxu, which markets jigsaw puzzles. 
You just received an email from your CEO asking you to choose between two logos. Your goal is to choose the one that will make the brand launch the most successful uh, that it can be. Which logo should you choose? The one on the right or the one on the left? Now, after reading that, anyone who's watching, which one would you choose? Would you go for the left one or would you go for the right one? Answers answers in a, in the chat box. And now I know this stream is, I'm kind of running 10 seconds or so ahead of you lot. So I'm, you know, there may be some pauses whilst I wait on uh, people giving answers in the chat. Um, it's not that I'm being particularly slow because it's seven o'clock in the evening. It's just waiting on the the chat to catch up. So if you were, you know, if you were going to be launching a brand new business selling logos, what do you think the best logo would be, left or right? Max is coming in with left. Mohammed's coming in with left. Helen's coming in with left. Okay, this is interesting. So just want to clarify that, you know, that we are seeing the same side here. So left is the one which is the the square, but it's been orientated, so it's more sort of diamond shaped. And then on the right, we've got the one which is like a jigsaw piece. Okay, so everyone that's kind of given a submission has said left. Um, okay, so that's really interesting. That is interesting to me, actually, because uh, I thought it would be the other way. Um, so it goes on to say good arguments can be made for either. For instance, if you pick the one on the left, you might have thought your customers prefer simpler designs. If you pick the one on the right, you might have thought the outline of the puzzle piece provides valuable information about the product. The objective of our, of our latest research was to assist managers with such a choice, to explore whether or when brands benefit from descriptive or non-descriptive logos. We conducted seven experimental studies and analysed the effect of logo design on the brand equity for 597 companies. If you haven't guessed it yet, the logo on the right is what we consider descriptive and the logo on the left is non-descriptive. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's descriptive because it's a jigsaw company and the one on the right looks like a jigsaw piece and the one on the left doesn't describe what the what the company does the name doesn't tell you what they do and the logo doesn't tell you what you what they do on the right the name still doesn't tell you what they do but the logo shape tells you what they sell or what they're involved in um let's see uh so sabrina went on the right and beardy says i didn't want to go against the grain but i thought right though both are rough. Uh, both, <laughs> yeah, they're not the best logos in the world, uh, but I think they were just trying to get a simple uh, a simple um, way of kind of showing descriptive and non-descriptive. Um, do logos really matter? Hmm, okay. So logo design choices might seem inconsequential to some, I would say to many, uh, but getting the design right is important for a number of reasons. A well-designed logo can offer substantial benefits to a brand. It can help pique the interest of the consumer. It can differentiate the brand from its competitors and it can facilitate brand recognition, influence investors' decisions and convey what a brand is all about. Wow, who knew logos could do all that? A logo is also a ubiquitous communication tool that might appear on your company's products. Maybe could have used a different word than ubiquitous. Um, Website, annual report, entryway, and even on your business card. It is thus a brand element that is frequently seen by stakeholders, particularly consumers. You know, and that's why, that's what most people think about logos. It's there for customers to see. You know, it's there to try to sell your product or service. Um, but, you know, as I'm always saying, your logo isn't really the thing that's going to sell the product or service. It's the logo is directing you to feelings and memories that you have of the brand that direct you to buy or not to buy what they have. Hey Esteban, thanks for joining. Um, furthermore, the design characteristics of logos can considerably impact consumer behavior and brand performance. 
Prior studies on logos have shown that their simplicity or complexity can influence the funding decisions investors make. That's a new one on me, so I must read. These look like links to other articles, so I'm going to have a look at that one. That one interests me. Um, and that their symmetry or asymmetry can boost brand equity. So very quickly, we I think we know what descriptive logos are. So a descriptive logo is a logo that includes textual or visual design elements that clearly communicate the type of product or service that the brand is marketing. For instance, the logo of Burger King and that of the New York Islanders, a sports franchise, are descriptive. The former contains the word burger and two hamburger buns. Now, this is the old Burger King logo. Um, the new one is much more simplified. They've got rid of this blue uh, swoosh around it. Um, and it's just the burger bun top and bottom with Burger King in the middle, sort of in a more rounded bubble writing. Um, same as in my in the thumbnail for this video, I've used the, the, the newer one, but still descriptive. Um, and then you've got non-descriptive, which is like the McDonald's uh, logo here. Um, I think they're going to probably say what non-descriptive is further down, but uh, or maybe they say here. Um, the latter includes a nice hockey stick and a puck. Conversely, the logos of McDonald's and the Minnesota Wild uh, are non-descriptive. They contain design elements that are not indicative of the type of product or service these brands are selling. So, yeah, we can see here Burger King says burger, looks a bit like a burger. Uh, New York Islanders, you've got the hockey stick and the puck. So it's, again, just in your face, this is what it's all about. McDonald's, if you didn't know the brand, you wouldn't know that they sold burgers and things. Um, and then what's this one called? This is the Minnesota Wild. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it is, in a way, it's descriptive and it kind of gets across the, the wild part of it. You know, you've got a wild animal head and sort of the, the trees give an impression of the forest, the woods, you know, the, the great outdoors, the wild. Uh, and looking at that, if someone asked me to guess, I would say that was a sports team logo it just looks like a sports team logo they all have quite a similar uh, similar style to them um, so this one I would say is kind of in between it's a semi nondescript logo in my eyes um, Beardy's saying that the animal head just popped for him as I said that all right so you didn't actually see the animal head interesting I saw it straight away when I when I first looked at this, um, but yeah, it's it's like a it could be a bear's head or like a panther or you know some sort of wild cat. Um, you got the eye here for the star, and then the 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 river is the mouth. Um, it's it's a good logo. It's a, it's a nice logo, and then the sun kind of plays like an ear type shape. Um, so the question of whether to use descriptive or logos or non-descriptive logos often arise during design meetings. In recent years, several brands have modified their logos to make them more descriptive, while others have made their logos non-descriptive. Dunkin' removed the word donuts and the coffee cup from its logo, making it non-descriptive. Conversely, Animal Planet made its logo even more descriptive by adding an elephant to the design. In our analysis, we found that about 60% of companies use non-descriptive logos, while 40% are using descriptive logos. So here we can see the changes in these two logos here. So Dunkin' Donuts just became Dunkin'. I don't know if they're in the UK or not. I don't think there's, I've not seen one local to me anyway. Um, and then you've got Animal Planet, and then you've got the new one over there. Um, I kind of like, I like the new Dunkin', logo i like the simplicity i'm a big fan of simple stuff um animal planet one i i kind of like the original one was quirky um and i kind of liked sort of all the different sizes and like the orientation i found that interesting to look at um not sure about the new one find it a little bit i don't know don't know i'm not not too keen on it uh However, as our research demonstrates, albeit within certain qualifications and under certain conditions, as you do in studies, descriptive logos more favourably impact consumers' brand perceptions than non-descriptive ones and are more likely to improve brand performance. 
So that's interesting that the majority of brands have non-descriptive logos, but their study is showing that the most effective logos for consumers are ones which are descriptive. What power does a descriptive logo have? So their studies and analysis reveal that it's easier for consumers to visually process descriptive logos and understand what a brand markets as a result. We also find that compared with non-descriptive logos, descriptive logos dot, dot, make brands appear more authentic in the consumer's eyes. They're more favorably impacting consumers' evaluations of brands and they're more strongly increasing consumers' willingness to buy from brands and they boost the brand's net sales more. The one that interests me there is that it makes brands appear <clears throat> more, auth more authentic. Um, that's, a, that's, that's an interesting one. Um, in one study, for instance, participants were randomly assigned one of two groups. One group was shown a descriptive version of the logo of a sushi restaurant, while the other was shown a non-descriptive version of the same logo. Each logo was accompanied by the same short description of the restaurant. After participants read the description of the restaurant and viewed their assigned logos, they indicated on a Likert scales how authentic they thought the restaurant was and how much they liked it. We compared the responses of the two groups and discovered that participants in the group exposed to the descriptive logo found the brand to be more authentic and liked it more than participants in the other group. In another study, we analyzed a data set of 423 business to consumer brands. To create this, we acquired each brand's financial information. We then obtained their logos and asked research assistants who did not know the purpose of the study to code whether these logos were descriptive or non-descriptive, as well as 13 other design characteristics, such as symmetry, shape, and color. Uh, Using a regression analysis, it's all getting pretty complicated for me, uh, we explored the effect on net sales of having a descriptive or non-descriptive logo. The financial information we gathered and the 13 logo design characteristics served as control variables. The results showed that a descriptive logo has a greater positive effect on sales than a non-descriptive one. So again, descriptive ones look like they're helping brands to make more money than non-descriptive. When we tested our findings on the logos of 174 early stage startups, this held true. We presented their logos and product descriptions to 2,630 individuals and found the descriptive logos were more often associated with a higher willingness to buy. Um, they just say, I wonder if that's a reaction to large conglomerates diluting their brand identities as they grow associating authenticity with smaller size or independence as a restaurant anyway. Quite possibly. I know that they do kind of touch on things towards the end of this, which which kind of makes more sense as to why some brands move to the non-descriptive uh, side of logos, uh, which, I, which I agree with. Is the power of a descriptive logo absolute? The benefits of using a descriptive logo are, of course, not experienced in the same way by every brand. So we're kind of getting on to where you are leading to. We compared the effects of having a descriptive logo for brands that are familiar to consumers and brands that are unfamiliar. We observed that although having a descriptive logo had a positive effect on brand equity for both familiar and unfamiliar brands, the magnitude of this positive effect was much smaller for the familiar brands. This is easily explained by the fact that when consumers are familiar with a brand, so think about, you know, McDonald's and Nike, um, they know more about it and are thus less... Uh, bleh, bleh, that's a mouthful. They know more about it and are thus less likely to be influenced by the logo design. Because they've had years and years of marketing, TV advertising, posters, sponsorships at events these big, big brands don't really need their logo to sell or tell you what it is that they do because you already know their logos, descriptive or non-descriptive, you just need to catch a glance of them and their brand pops into your head. You don't need the logo to, to tell you what they do. We also found that descriptive logos had a negative effect on brands that market products or services associated with sad or unpleasant things like palm oil, funeral homes, and bug repellents. 
For such products or services, the design elements of a descriptive logo bring to mind the negative concepts that some consumers associate with them. Deforestation, death and bug bites. Um, it kind of makes sense, you know, you don't see many sort of funeral homes or that that use, you know, coffins and stuff in their logos. Um, it tends to be more... Um, more about meaning and feeling um, uh, than, you know, what it is that they do uh, because of what it said here. You know, it's the negative aspects that people don't want to think about. Um, so what can companies learn? And what can you learn? Uh, if you're considering creating or modifying a logo, our findings suggest that you might want to include at least one textual and or a visual design element that is indicative of the type of product or service that your company offers. For instance, if you own a coffee shop, you should consider creating a logo that includes a coffee cup with hot steam rising from it, or not. Um, uh, something, you know, it's incredibly cliched, but that's the designer in me coming out and, you know, descriptive logos are that, so I kind of need to, I need to pull back a little bit and not get too too designery about that. Um, if you're about to open a bookstore, make sure you choose a logo that features a book. And if you work for Noxu, that, that fictitious jigsaw puzzle brand that we mentioned earlier, tell your CEO that you want to use the logo shown on the right. It's lucky that some of us here aren't the ones doing that because we went left, uh, didn't we, instead of right. If, however, you work for a brand that markets a product or service that can easily bring to mind negative concepts, a non-descriptive logo is probably better. We also suspect that non-descriptive logos are better for companies that operate in several unrelated business segments, such as Uber, Procter & Gamble, and the Walt Disney Company. For these companies, a logo that is indicative of, an, of the unrelated products or services they offer might be unappealing and confusing. Brands that do, not to be, that do not want to be strongly associated with a specific product should also avoid descriptive logos. For example, the decision to change the Duncan logo likely arose from the company's desire to become more associated with products like bagels. And that's the thing with, um, like they're saying here, you may start off your business selling one product or delivering one type of service, but there is a good chance that as you grow, you may move into other sectors and bring in other products and services and having a logo which focuses descriptively on one aspect will make it harder for you to be seen um, as you know good in the other sectors that you want to represent you know people will be like but you sell coffee why are you also doing this um, you know so having a non-descriptive logo helps you to bring in as many aspects as you want and your logo's not saying we only do this one thing. And that's why you do see places like Procter & Gamble who have multiple brands, um, uh, Unilever as well, you know, multiple, multiple brands under their umbrella. Um, and all of the brands that they have under the umbrella are massive brands in themselves, you know, so they, they can have logos which say what they do about the product or service but Unilever don't want that they want to just be an umbrella brand um, of course we're not contending that a descriptive logo guarantees the successful launch of a brand or that the logo is the most important brand element to consider agreed we are arguing that underestimating the importance of logo design and the power of descriptive design elements can sometimes be a costly mistake so that's the article Okay, um, so in a way, when I read this, it wasn't it wasn't really news to me. Um, it kind of made sense that if people see a descriptive logo that says what a company does, then it makes it quicker for them to go, especially if they're looking for that specific product. Oh, these guys sell what I want, right, I'm going to have a look at their stuff and I'm probably going to buy their stuff. Whereas if they're looking for something specific and they find a brand, you know, the, the Google search or they're walking around, you know, they're walking down the high street and they're looking at shop fronts and looking at logos and stuff. 
and maybe a shop that they're walking past sells the thing that they need, but the name or the logo just doesn't shout it at them, then there's a chance that they could walk on by. Um, and the same goes for, you know, uh, Google searches and stuff. If it doesn't jump out, you know, if the name doesn't jump out, then there's a chance people can, can move by on it. So the fact that they're saying descriptive logos work well at getting people to jump in, and so them saying that those brands tend to make more money makes sense as well. Um, but I would say it's probably, you know, it is more effective for newer businesses, newer brands who don't have a lot of brand equity, don't have a huge amount of brand awareness. Um, if I was working with a brand, if a brand came to me that was really well known um, and they were like, right, we've got this, we feel that there's this problem with the brand, we feel we need to change our brand identity, you know, just the, the look of the, the logo, change our colours or whatever. Um, that's not really, you're going to get, you'll probably get a lot of uh, feedback, shall we say, from customers, because whenever a big brand changes their logo, there's always massive, massive outcry from people saying, it sucks, you know, why did you change it? I like the old one. That usually lasts for a couple of weeks and then people don't care anymore. Um, so for bigger brands, when you're, you've got huge amount of brand awareness, changing something like your logo, um, you know, it needs to be done with, with good reason, um, isn't really going to have much of an impact if they go from a descriptive to a non-descriptive. Again, maybe it's because they're wanting to move into other areas and they feel right okay now's the time for us to go to a non-descriptive logo um, because we're now going to be selling multiple different products it's not going to affect them but if you're a brand new company like that jigsaw company in the article and you start up and your name doesn't say what you do um, and your logo doesn't really give an indication of what you do then you're probably going to have a harder time raising that early brand awareness um, unless you've got lots of money to do a lot of marketing, you know, really mass market, get stuff out there on all the platforms. Um, and, you know, so if, if a customer came to me and said, should I have a descriptive or a non-descriptive logo? I probably couldn't give them an answer. I mean, I could probably say, well, without knowing anything about what you're wanting to do, what you're selling, what your business is, why are you different from anyone else that's selling the thing that you have? Or maybe you've got something that nobody sells. Um, without knowing that, I would say you want a descriptive logo because it seems like the safest thing to do at the beginning. Um, but once you find out more information, once you do some some of the strategic work, looking at the brand and looking at you know how it's different, what its purpose is, what its goals are, then it may be that a descriptive, uh, non-descriptive logo is the right thing to do because it may be that a non-descriptive logo would be more advantageous for the type of brand marketing that the company wants to to go out there with. Um, Personally, I think sometimes descriptive logos can be quite, uh, can inhibit some of your branding because you're, you know, it's sort of, it's all or nothing really. With non-descriptive logos, ones which are a little bit more abstract, I think you have more room to play, more room to play with the brand colors. You can introduce other shapes, take shapes from the abstract logo. And because it's abstracted, non-descriptive, you can have a, probably a little bit more fun with that. Um, I'm just saying that from my own experience. Some some people may disagree, um, but it would be interesting to know if you know you found if this was news to you, or if this is what you sort of expected, um, or if you know if you have a brand, has this made you think about your own logo? Do you have a non-descript logo and you're thinking maybe I should change that to a descriptive one? Or do you have a descriptive one and you're thinking, well, we actually sell a lot of products and maybe our logo, our descriptive logos, holding us back a little bit and making people think we only do this one thing. Um, it's a bit like early logos of mine for, for 
for my Pixels Inc. brand, it was, you know, <clears throat> I think I had at one time, because of the name Pixels and in Ink, I had, you know, sort of a brush and a pencil or something. Um, but that kind of ruled out the fact that I also did, you know, other types of, you know, consultation work on on strategy and, and, and other areas of, you know, that are in the creative field. Um, and that was a reason that I changed my logo to just text. Um, and I have the I have the initials in a little circle. I just wanted to simplify it down so that I didn't feel pigeonholed and my logo didn't look too cliched, like a you know, like it was a creative agency. Um, I wanted to use my marketing and my content to get across what it is that I do. Getting a little bit croaky in my voice. Um. So it's been, I find this this is an interesting, um, let's go back to it, uh, an interesting article. Um, and they obviously, you know, they studied quite a few brands and they had like, you know, a few thousand people doing some of these tests. So it's, you know, it's not just, they've not just like interviewed 50 people. Um, so the, the results are, are pretty good. Um, it wouldn't, it doesn't change how I do my processes uh, when it comes to, you know, working with clients. Um, but definitely, uh, like I mentioned, you know, if I had no information and someone just said, start a new business, what type of logo should I go for, descriptive or non-descriptive? Based on this, I would say your, your best chance is to go and start with a descriptive logo. Um... So yeah, that's uh, that was kind of what I wanted to do uh, today was to, to have a run through that. Um, if anyone's got any questions around that, drop them in the chat. You know, if you've got any questions about your own your own brand, your own business, about your logo, where do you think it fits, where you, where it doesn't, drop it in the chat. Um, uh, Max is saying it's been a helpful article um, and didn't know this before. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's, I mean, there's plenty of articles out there, and, and I think a, a lot of these things can fly under the radar, and people miss them. Uh, we can all make assumptions on stuff uh, based on our personal preferences, especially like with this logo, with this jigsaw one here. Um, you know, when you when you think about it, there's a, when you think about, you know, I think about a lot of uh, sort of consultation businesses and coaches and things like that um back especially back in the 90s uh they all used jigsaws either in their logo or in their print material you know we help you piece things together and very sort of literal what they're trying to do and it became really cheesy and really cliched and so sometimes that the memories that I have of, of those times and think the way things were designed really influenced me in the way I think about certain logos, um, especially jigsaws. But I can absolutely see the point of having a jigsaw piece shaped logo that says, this is what we do. We, we make logos. Uh, oh God, <laughs> we make jigsaws. Um, not we make logos, we make jigsaws. Uh, so it's kind of taken that step back. Um, but do we feel though that in the longer term that that jigsaw shape does become a little bit naff, uh, to use a, a UK word, a little bit cheesy, a little bit cheap looking, you know? Does it look like a budget jigsaw company? Whereas the one on the left which is non-descriptive, it's just a square, you know, pink square, black border with Noxu um, written in it with terrible um, terrible kerning on the text. That needs to be sorted out. Um, doesn't say what you do, so it's, it's less limiting in terms of, uh, for me anyway, in terms of how I perceive the brand, whether it's cheap or higher end. If anything, uh, if someone, you know, if there was no name there or whatever and somebody said, of these two, 
which one would you say was the most expensive when it came to jigsaws? I'd probably go left rather than right because I just feel that the the one on the right is a little bit cliched. Um, and for me, when something's cliched, it's it's generally someone hasn't spent a lot of time thinking about their logo. They've just gone for the obvious. And so that to me, rightly or wrongly, gives me an impression of the quality of the product and the service that they give. Um, and I'm sure I'm not alone in thinking that uh, when it comes to these things. Let me just check up on the chat here. Um, so Helen's saying, I can understand the benefit of a descriptive logo for a new brand, but as a hypnotherapist, I've seen too many logos incorporating brains and spirals. Yeah, uh, and that's kind of what I'm saying as well, Helen, is that it becomes so cliched and cheesy that, it really affects your, you know, your ability to uh, be seen as an expert, you know, and kind of a higher up in your field. You, it's almost like you, you're a bit more of a, especially with your industry, Helen, where, you know, um, I've had hypnotherapy sessions myself for various things, and I treat that as a medical thing, something which helps me, and, you know, has helped me with my, my mental health, my attitude, uh, so much stuff has helped me with. But when you see the cheesy logos for hypnotherapists, for me, that lends itself more to the um, sideshow exhibition, um, making fun of people on stage type hypnotherapy. Um, and when people start to get those two mixed up, it's not great. So, you know, I would definitely, for me, if, if you know, someone came to me, I would be looking at... Um, a non-descriptive logo and I would be looking at typography, colours and shapes which get across a feeling and a meaning of the outcome of how that hypnotherapy service is going to help them, you know, uh, make their life better, help them, you know, get over hurdles or whatever it is, you know, stop smoking and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a good point, Helen. Um, Mohammed saying, but if the business sells different things from the beginning, shall I make a non-descriptive one? Um, again, without, you know, knowing what, you know, if it's very different, if, if, if you're selling lots of different, completely different, unassociated things, you know, there's no link between them at all, then yeah, I would probably say you don't want a, a descriptive logo. Um, but again, doing the strategy work, things may change because once you start to look at your target audience, um, what do they like, where do they hang out, what are they expecting, then that can direct you. But like I mentioned earlier, if, if, if I had to give an answer straight away, I would say non-descriptive because you're selling such a wide array that you, you, know, you don't want to have a logo which maybe says you only sell one thing. Now, you might sell multiple products, but it might all be in one sector. So it might be um, electrical tools, you know? So there'd be lots of different tools, but it's under one sector of electric, you know? So you could probably do something around that, which is descriptive because you're describing the area that the tools are in. But if you're selling completely random stuff, um, uh, when I say random, I just mean things that aren't associated, then, you know, non-descriptive is probably the way that you want to go. Now, obviously, there's another thing that you can introduce to your logo which can help the consumer. So you would have your logo, let's say it's non-descriptive. You have your name, non-descriptive. You, you can add a tagline to your logo which may help get across what you do. I've done a few logos for... Um, accountancy firms for example where the name and the symbol of the you know the logo doesn't say that they're accountants but they then have underneath a little descriptor little tagline which says what they do um it might be as straightforward as you know uh accountancy and financial advice you know just underneath um that then sort of helps the consumer go well I don't know what they do from the logo but oh okay there's a tagline but you know that's a very obvious way of, of getting around that but sometimes people don't want to have taglines on their logos so 
Um, you know, you need to kind of think of other ways of doing that. Now, I will say, and I say this pretty much on every stream, it's very rare that your logo is going to be seen in isolation. It's not, you know, it's not just going to be, if it is your logo on its own on a wall, then it's that logo is probably going to be on your in your premises somewhere. Um, so people will be in your premises and they'll know what you do. Otherwise, your logo is going to be on a business card, which will probably have what, a little description of what you do on it, or it's on your website. So, you know, it's not in isolation. So there are other factors to take, you know, into, into account. I um, mean, obviously, when they did this study, they were just asking people to look at logos and make decisions based on the logo on its own in isolation, not, you know, on a poster. So the McDonald's logo, for example... If you didn't know who they were or what they did and you saw their logo, but it would probably be on a poster next to a burger with a catchphrase or something. So you go, oh, they sell burgers. So there's there are there's there's lots of factors that you need to take into account with that. Um Sabrina, I'm in the process of, I'm in the process of designing a logo now, but thinking non-descriptive now. Um <clears throat> Well, that's, you know, that's the thing. And, and, and that's why I want to bring this up is that, you know, you may just think, oh, it's obvious for me to go down the descriptive route. But, you know, I know that there's, you know, it does also then, you know, make you think about the stats that they gave. So we we'll read this and we go, well, for consumers, descriptive logos. That's, you know, it seems that they like those the most. Yet from the stats, 60% of the brands that they looked at had non-descriptive logos. So the brands themselves obviously feel for the the route that they want to take with their business that non-descriptive is the is the best way forward for them. It's maybe less inhibiting and gives them a much wider scope for the future. And they maybe felt that descriptive logos were holding them back. Exactly like the Dunkin' Donuts one. They dropped the donuts, they removed the coffee cup, and they are now free to expand their business into different types of areas that don't just include donuts and coffee. Um, although those are two, obviously, vital ingredients to life every day. Um, uh, Mohammed saying, uh, working on a new one as well. Okay, cool. So uh, I think we can kind of just leave that, uh, that there. I did mention at the start of the stream that... Um, I have finally, 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 finally got the logo submissions uh, form up and running for anyone that wants to submit a logo to me for critique. Um, I will basically look at the logo and the information provided around that logo and give a review of that logo on the channel, uh, giving my thoughts, um, whether I think, you know, it, it thoughts on the design, whether it's, you know, whether it fits the industry that it's been designed for. And you know, these will just be my personal opinions, um, you know. Um, but uh, many people over the years of me running the YouTube channel have, have, I get constant messages saying, will you review my logo? I did actually review one logo and I released it as a video and it, w it was pretty popular, but I just had other things, other videos that I needed to do. But now with doing the live streaming and, and stuff like that, I think now's the right time to, to get into that. So let me just kind of jump over to this. Okay, so this is not going to break any, not break or win. This is not gonna win any web design awards, right? Um, this is purely functional. Uh, I needed to get this up and running because if I didn't, I would have just sat on it and never got it done. And all you would have heard from me every single week was, I'm still working on it. I will get it up. Promise. I promise. Um, and it, I started to feel really bad about saying that over the past couple of weeks or months. So I now have this page up and running. So what you can do is you can go to this page. Um, it's rockyourbrand.co.uk forward slash logo hyphen critique hyphen form um i will probably release a short link for that as well um and i'll post it in the youtube community channel um if you don't know what the 
community channel is. If you go to my YouTube page, I go to my YouTube channel, um, you'll see some menu buttons. It'll probably say videos and, and stuff. One of them says community. If you click on that, I post uh, now and again inside there um, bits of information, any sort of deals that I've seen online, which I think would be useful for anyone for, um, uh, you know, apps and software, books, etc. I'll post them in there. Um, the the long term plan is to get Rock Your Brand up and running as a fully functional website, where I will have pages dedicated to those different types of things. Um, so page, you know, for the best books to read, uh, the best software to use, um, all that kind of stuff. So everything's in one place, including signing up to like the newsletter and these logo critiques. So I've dropped the link into the chat uh, for this page right now. It's It has um, shortened it, but I think it will link through. Um, and so it's fairly straightforward. I want your name because um, I'd like to, you know, give you a shout out. Um, email just so I can get back to you. Um, and then I've given a choice here for the project type, whether it's a personal logo or a logo that you've done for a client. Now, personal logo could be you know, a logo for yourself, you know, your own business, for example. Um, so you've designed that for yourself, for your own business or personal logo would also include self-initiated now i know a lot of people do things like 30-day logo challenges where you get given a topic and you have to design a logo uh, on that ideally i wouldn't be getting sent those um ideally i would i want logos that are for businesses so that i can give good feedback that you know um, it might be I'll get some logos in that require no feedback. I think they're amazing. And I will bring those up on the channel as well, and I will say so. Uh, but for other logos where I feel they need a bit of work, I'd like to. I'd like that advice to be going to something useful. If I am only being supplied with logos that have been done for 30-day challenges, generally the um, the design briefs for those are quite short, and there isn't a client at the other end who's giving feedback and or even pushback um, compared to when you're designing a logo for your own business because you're your own client um, or a client's business. It's a very, very, very different experience. Um, but right now, I'm going to just leave that there and see how we get on with it. If I end up getting too many logos coming through from these design competitions, I will change the form and I will make it clear that I'm only accepting logos for for businesses um, because I just think that's the, the best way forward for that. Um, so here uh, I ask for the project description and the brief. Um, I mentioned here over on the left that um, my reviews, my critiques won't be just on how the logo looks. Um, I want to know what it's for, you know, what industry sector are, is the business in? What's the target audience? Is it young people, old people, people who are into fashion, sports? Um, what's the personality that the, the logo is trying to get across? Is it serious, friendly, fun, adventurous? Um, and what are the qualities? Um, is, it, is it to come across as expensive, cheap, reliable, quick? That kind of thing. The more information that I can get, the better the review I can give because I can then say, right, well, if you're wanting this to, you know, to be friendly and fun, then you probably want to change your type here because the type that you have comes across as a bit serious. So let's take a look at typefaces which, you know, have a bit more fun around them, you know, something a bit more rounded, a bit more soft. Um, so that will really, really help me. If I don't have any information, if you don't provide information, the logo won't make it onto the channel for review. Um, uh, it will just come down to as well how many submissions I get. And as um, Beardy has said, how many troll submissions I get through this form. Um, but the more, you know, the more information I ask for, the less likely it's a troll 
logo that's coming through and hopefully I'll be able to spot some and not get caught out on the channel by uh, people submitting troll ones. Um, you can upload your files. So I've uh, given it a maximum of four, you know, so probably, you know, the logo on its own and some supporting material. So it might be, you know, you've done some uh, mock-ups and that'd be quite good. I'll probably actually update that. I'll maybe update this here with a file upload and just say, you know, with a bit more um, explanation. So definitely upload a logo in isolation, but then um, some supporting things. It might be that you have created some logo guidelines that, you know, show what the color palette is and the what uh, fonts are being used, um, all those kinds of things. Um, I'm now thinking about it because I'm, this, like I say, this just went up. Uh, I finished this earlier today. <laughs> It's, it's like literally brand new. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll record a little video and I'll embed a little video on that page which just runs through everything that I'm saying to you guys. You know, a little bit of um, background as to what I'm expecting. Um, and then just to kind of stop, uh, try to limit the amount of uh, spam that I get through this, I've put in a little, um, little uh, maths for people to solve. Um, and I've gone for 10 plus 1, which equals 11. And if you um, have ever watched This Is Spinal Tap, you will know what 11 means. And then you can submit that. And when you submit this, um, you'll get just taken to a thank you page. And your information and your files will be sent through. I have tested it. It works for me. Um, and um, hopefully it'll work for everybody else. Uh, so that's uh, the logo critique submission. Um, you can also jump from here just, you know, just to say that, um, you know, if you haven't signed up to my monthly bulletin yet, um, it's, you know, obviously I write it, but I think it's pretty good. I get some good feedback on it. Um, there are 10 issues here on this page. What I want to do is maybe create again a, a dedicated page which has an archive um, of, of the issues. I think we're, yeah, so we're about to go issue 20. This is the most consistent I've ever been with a monthly newsletter. Um, I think I've made it to like two or three before and then just not had the time. So I'm, I've been pretty good with this. I'm at issue 20 um, and it um, goes out on the first Monday of every month. Um, and Holly, who um, I would not be without, um, writes a monthly sort of tips uh, PDF and that could be about personal stuff or it could be about business stuff it could be you know some good apps to help you with um, uh, social media content all sorts of different things this month's one for example the one that went out this week was about burnout and I did a little piece about uh, brand burnout how your brand could burn out and Holly did a uh, a really good document on personal burnout and how you can limit that, you know, how to kind of just chill out a little bit and, you know, not burn out from that uh, perspective. Um, so, yeah, um, if you haven't signed up to it, just fill in the um, the little form here and um, you'll get put on the list. So it's a really simple, there's no, there's no menu, there's no sort of footer menu. You can basically just jump between the two pages, which I have by clicking on the red text which is you know between the between the two um but i'm so relieved to get that up and running um and i'm looking forward to to giving you know my opinions on on the logos that get sent in uh there is something that i've shied away from um i'm i'm more than happy to you know speak to people and give clients feedback on their existing brand and stuff but there's just something about critiquing people's logos that you know you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings if the logo is not particularly good but you know if I just looked at it from my perspective well if I've created something and it could be improved upon I'd like to know about it you know I would I would rather somebody told me than let me just crack on and use the thing and it you know and it's maybe not doing the best that it could so um so yeah so it's Time for me to kind of, you know, step up a little bit and uh, again, help, you know, help people out with their logos. And the cool thing is as well, is that anyone who watches the, the videos will learn about logo design and, you know, how to make things better um, and how to improve on stuff. And, and that's the end goal at the end of the day. That's what my channel is for. Uh, 
uh, and talking about the channel, um, I changed the name of the channel uh, this week. Um, it was under my business name, which is Pixels Inc. Um, but I'm now sort of in the process of, um, it's not Proc Your Brand, I'm now in the process of kind of separating out two elements of my business. So Rock Your Brand will be the, um, uh, I can see that we're live. The Rock Your Brand is going to be the uh, teaching, education, uh, consultation side of my business. Um, and I want all of that to be under the Rock Your Brand label. And then the design side of my business, the design services will be under the Pixels Inc. label. And so it made sense for me to change my YouTube channel fully over to the Rock Your Brand brand name. It does help as well that I now have the registered trademark for that. Um, so I feel comfortable using that now. Um, change the header uh, and everything so it's now all a bit more seamless. It ties in with the newsletter, which is education, and it ties in with the workshops that I do for, for other establishments, the brand workshops and stuff. So it's all coming together after 15 years. <laughs> Can't say I'm you know a fast mover on these things, uh, but it's all seems to, it feels right. It feels like the right time to do that. Um, and talk, the one last thing to talk about in terms of the education side of stuff, I mentioned before on one of the live streams that um, a bit like the logo critiques, I'd been asked more than a few times about mentorship. And um, it's something I've shied away from. But again, I've always wanted to teach and I, I, I love teaching people. And so there will be, we did a, a poll on the community channel. Could be a few, few posts down now, I think. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, we did the poll. Um, it's not showing the results because I'm... Oh, let me vote. I'm just going to say, uh, yes, I'm interested. Uh, it's asking me to sign in. Okay, fair enough. Um, didn't get a huge number of people voting. 42 people voted. But I think it basically balanced out about that. 35% said that, yes, they'd be interested in a mentorship program. And 65% said, no, nah, no. Nah, Totally cool, just watching the the free stuff you provide, which is which is fine. Um, but that thirty five percent kind of works out to be about fifteen people. Um, and I said to myself that if I could get six people who were interested, then I would develop um, a a course, you know, a very you know fairly simple mentorship course that I would then give the details out and then see if people were interested in going ahead. So like I say, I've got about 15 people who are interested through the community channel and not everyone knows that's there. So there'll probably be more people who'd be interested. So I'm in the process just now of um, putting together a rough outline of what that mentorship would involve. And once that's ready, I will post it into the community channel and I will probably release a video and I will... Um, put it elsewhere just to let people know about it and uh, kick off a mentorship. And that will be aimed at designers, uh, designers who are probably early in their career. Uh, doesn't matter what age the designer is, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're, you know, 18 or 65. It's more about uh, helping designers who are early in their career to avoid the mistakes that I've made and help give them a leg up and a faster boost to winning better clients, you know, charging better money, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that uh, starting as well. Um, and uh, I think that's, I think that's uh, it for today. What are we at? What time are we at? Oof, bang on an hour. Um, I'm getting good at this, uh, getting it to the to an hour. Um, thank you so much, uh for joining. I really appreciate it. These live streams would not be the same without you guys coming on and taking part in the chat. Really um, slightly different one this week, you know, that we were just kind of, you know, I was reading to you. I was giving you story time through that study, uh, but I think it was valuable. I think it was worth doing and um, we'll be back next week. Um, don't know what the topic is yet. I might put a poll into the community tab, so keep an eye out for that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you subscribe. Click the little bell icon 
and choose all notifications. Um, I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm not logged in. Um, but if you hit subscribe and click the bell, it gives you a couple of options. If you want to be notified when I'm when I'm live or when I've posted something in the community tab, then you need to make sure that you have all notifications selected. Okay, so thanks again. Stay creative and uh, I'll catch up with you all in a week's time. Bye for now.